Stephen, um, when you had to be a reporter for a minute, and uh, he was about 45 seconds on the match yesterday between the seniors and oh, the match. All right, yeah. <laughs> Sport, right. first of all. Yeah, no, I mean, it was just two thirty minutes. We made nine, nine changes at half time, so just some players needed uh, some match fitness. I think that was just to, to give them a bit of focus. Really, they, they would have known a couple of weeks ago that they were playing a game the second day, so it was up to people to uh, be up to speed to co coming in yesterday to make sure that they were ready to play. We hadn't got we hadn't got time to bring people in and train people and get them ready ready for training games. So we need people to hit the ground running on the second day in, and uh, that would have been dependent on them doing work leading into here. So it was a good workout. Uh, the under twenty ones played well, and we made a lot of changes because of the defenders were late in James Cole and Nathan Cole. Collins, John Egan, not late in, but in in up today or in yesterday because they only finished a week ago. So we, in the second half of the game, we had a, a lot of forwards in the team, so we are unbalanced for sure. But it was a very useful exercise and we're pleased with it. 2-1? I think it finished 2-1, but it was, it was uh, the goals weren't, weren't that relevant. But it was just a good workout, you know? And what about the, the new faces that you hadn't seen before, the, the likes of... Uh, CJ, CJ Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, players. Some players have to play out out of position. Um, so yeah, CJ fit in terrifically well, and you know he's got a really good attitude, and uh, he did well. And even though he's been before, I guess it's his, almost a new experience for Michael Obafemi. Yeah. As well, um, you know, how have they integrated into the squad? Because there seems to have been a, a really good bond that's developed with this particular group of players. Yeah, we're, we're, like we're only in obviously a couple of days, so. Michael's Michael's good name is is uh, you know he's a great character and you know he's he's fitted in fine you know. And in terms of the, the pace that Michael Fessio the Sole uh, CJ can, can bring, I mean, is that affecting your thinking already into how you're going to decide the first eleven against Armenia the starting eleven? Not really. I think we want to give ourselves options over the four games. That's critical. And if you lose somebody from game to game, you just want to make sure you're not. You know, you're not restricted with your options. I think that's important, and uh, you know, some of the, some of the other players have done well. So it's not, it's not like players are just going to come in and come straight into the team straight away. You know, you know, we've been on a good run of form, and players have done well in previous internationals and uh, have scored goals, and that's been important. It's an interesting challenge in terms of management, though. How you manage it? You suggested that it's a bit like a tournament, and mm -hmm. um, you obviously want a good start. Do you put out your your best team, or do you think about there's three more games to come in a very short period of time? No, I, I, we're not. We're not in a position to think like that. You know, I think we've got to pick what we feel is the right game or the right team for for Armenia. Obviously, Armenia is a challenge away from home, and um, you know we've watched the matches. Obviously, they've they've had mixed results, but we've watched the matches that they've beaten Iceland at home and beaten Romania. Um, so they they capable they capable of winning matches. They won, a, they won a group with Georgia and North Macedonia to qualify. So and we know that we're going to be out here playing in probably 28, 29 degrees at five o'clock. So that's a challenge as well. So we've got to make sure that we're ready, and uh, we're not thinking about matches in advance of that. But you know we've got to we've got to look at you know Armenia be a big challenge for us, and uh, one that we're looking forward to. Just one last one for me. You said before that. The squad now is a reflection of, of, of modern Ireland, um, of, of a new Ireland, if you, if you like. And how important is that? Um, you know, it's not, none of it is picked for any of, the, any of those reasons. It's just a, it's a mer based on merit. You know, the players that are, that are picked are based on merit. And that's just a reflection of all the, all the work going on throughout the country, at all the clubs, all the players that come through all the clubs. And... So most of them in, into the international teams and true some of them not but it's um it's a reflection on what's happening around the country and the the international team reflects reflects what's happening around the country and um you know football more than any other sport reaches all strands of society and certainly um you know the we want the international team to represent everyone really and uh, that's 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 the way it is go ahead please Hi Stephen, have you got any injury issues with any of the players at the moment? No, no, we haven't really. Uh, we, we had um, 27 players training today. So um, we haven't got injured. We've we players that 
uh, have to manage stuff, you know, but uh, nothing that will rule anyone out of the first game at the moment. Well, so you've got 27 fit players and you've got two and a half weeks with them. That's almost utopia, isn't it, for an international manager? <laughs> right. Uh, well, I, I think uh, it's it, it's so quick, really. This is the, the only real training block is from is this th these four days, because after that, then you know, it's just uh, I stay minus one and, and the and the preparation in Armenia, yeah, I say minus two. So, and once once the games happen, then it's it's you know you're training the players that aren't playing, and you're you're really into match day minus one. Before all the games, whether that be Ukraine, Scotland, and back out to Ukraine again, so it's not like you will have big numbers training. You won't. This will be the only days that we will have num high, high numbers training. Part, you know, obviously, apart from the day before the game, which you're, you know, you're just fine tuning your tactical, you know, your tactical plans and so forth for the games itself. So listen, the attitude of the players is terrific. You know, they've shown a trip. They're always a terrific attitude, and um, they've come in, come in, realize it's games are uh, they're excited by the games you know we've got four tough games and uh, and it's a big challenge getting through the four games in close proximity it's a it's a challenge that hasn't sort of best of my <coughs> you know it hasn't existed before to have a four game window in competitive games so that's that's new territory for everyone but we're not daunted by it we're actually you know we're not daunted by it we realize that's the challenge and one that we we want to meet and uh, what are the prospects of any of the players starting all four games? Yeah, that's 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 entirely possible. Yeah, uh, you know, so we, not everyone, I'm sure, but you know, that's certainly entirely possible. Judge, please. Thank you. How you doing? Uh, just to develop on twenty five, but playing pace and some of the players we have in this squad, you know, have immense pace. Do you feel that that's the best way to get the most out of these players and the way to open up teams like Armenia? play with the and they won't be able to look at that. Uh, I think it, it'd be naive to suggest that, you know, or just bring players in have not been capped before and just put them out and, and expect the opposition not to not to be able to live with it. I think uh, some of the players that pace is an important component, but it's not the only component. And uh, you've got to have uh, the right balance in your team and uh, creativity. Uh, the physical attributes that you need and and uh, and speed and um, certainly it is good to have the options um, it is good to have the options and that that's that's important but um we're not fixated on on speed we do think it's an important attribute but it's it's only one attribute with four games in 10 days it's very intense workload particularly for some of those younger players younger players coming in so you got to manage that yeah, it's it's a challenge, and, and, and the flights as well. You know, you've got to get, get to Armenia, um, the time zones, play in hot temperatures, and fly through the night to get back to get ready for for the Ukraine. So it is uh, it is a big challenge, but that's that's what you're presented with. Uh, we're not we're not in the least bit complaining about it. We're we're looking forward to it. So we see it as a challenge, and we have to uh, you know we have to get ourselves ready. And be ready for the four games, and we will be able to utilize our squad. I'm sure, invariably, you sort of can pick up injuries or, or knocks between the games, and that's so. Already, obviously, Josh Cullen, for example, is suspended for the first game, so but he'll be available for the other three. So you will get changes and so forth across the games for sure. Gavin, hi Stephen. Um, most managers, when they're asked, kind of jealously guard their targets and their specific targets. You are very, you've been very open. Um, about aiming to win this Nations League group. I'm just interested in why you said that publicly. Well, I think, um, you know, it's the progression of the, the team. We've seen the team evolve over a period of time. Um, from March to March, from March to March, we scored 23 goals, you know, and the, the team has improved. We've kept five clean sheets in the last six games. And um, you know, so we, we know that uh, it's a big incentive because we know the incentive that is there, that the, the possibility of getting second seed for the for the European Championship draw, the fact that you can actually 
get it get into the top table of the Nations League or you can even get a playoff you know in, for, for, for a possible playoff for, for for the European Championship so there's a lot of a lot of motivation there we realise you know, we've got a tough group we're drawn in the tough group Ukraine quarterfinals the European Championships mm. um, really exceptional team Scotland are on a, on a high as a nation at the moment and uh, Armenia are improving of course so it's um, so we've got a tough group but now it's early in our ambition to win the group and that's what we want and that's what um, that's what we want to try and achieve it's just interesting because traditionally I don't think Irish managers will be that bold to pronounce that, that this is the target you know I just find it maybe I just find it interesting I wouldn't say it's not unusual you know but I think um, you know that's, uh, that's the way it is Final foot one of the live from Ed, please. Stephen, how are you? Um, there's been international managers grumbling about the fixture schedule over the next couple of weeks. Um, I suppose based on the last 12 months with the stream of results, confidence in the squad, and the fact that this time last year the summer camp was so successful, would it be fair to say that you're not in that camp of thinking and that you're really embracing this and sort of creating that mini tournament scenario? Yeah, I, I always, even as a, uh, at my club, I never minded seven games in 21 days if everyone else had it as well. I always looked at it as an advantage, you know, that psychologically, if you prepare well and you're ready for it and physically, you, you know, you understand what's required. I always seen it as an opportunity to get ahead of your rivals. You know, that's why I always thought, I always liked those periods and thought, right, and I always say to the players, this is their opportunity to get ahead now because... Other people will be worried about the impact of it, but we've got to be, we've got to approach it in the way that we can. But it's not sometimes when it's disparity and, um, you know, for example, like we played Serbia, it was our tour game in six days, and they were able to play guitar, the rest of 11 players, you know what I mean, before they played us. So, um, in, in, in that, so, you know, sometimes when it's not even, I don't like that. But if it's even for everyone, I don't mind it. Do you know kind of way? I don't mind. I'm happy with it if it's if it's even. If if all the teams have to do that, you know. Um. So, obviously, we're unsure. We don't know. Um. You know the the other results around us will will dictate the fixtures, but we know what we have to do. We know that we've got four games, so we just have to plan accordingly. Okay, that ends the live section now, please, guys. We can end the live section. That's everything from this point onwards is embargoed until 11 p.m. tonight. We're actually going to start with Paul, and then Gavin, Owen, and then Daniel. Saving here, um, we were talking to Callum Robinson there, just about you know the build-up that he had to that Azerbaijan game, how unusual it was, world's media attention, not just here. Um, how tricky was that for you to manage that with them? How did you manage it with them? And was it totally unprecedented for you as a manager to have that kind of world attention on, on one of your players? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't really look at it like that, like, you know, you're in a camp and, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of media attention focused on it and so forth, so we're just trying to focus on the football itself and, um, as a Bajan away, you know, any, any game against those nations away from home are difficult, um, so we're just delighted to win it 3-0 and for Callum to score two, and the spectacular na nature of the strikes as well, they were just, Stunning strikes, and then to bring that into the next game, get five goals in one window, it was uh, it was a good time for them. Um, we got a goal in the next window, so I think it's it's shown that he has the capacity to for big moments. You know, I think uh, in games and um, obviously we didn't have him for a variety of reasons for for for, for, for a few camps. So it was great to, great to have him then and do as well as he did. Um, because he showed his quality with the, with the quality of goals that he got. He showed great quality, and uh, and it's not just his goals. He creates a lot of goals, even because he's two foot. You know, his goals against Azerbaijan. One was a strike with his left foot in twenty five yards. The other one was the right foot. His stand up cross for Chidozi's goal, for example, against Belgium, was you know getting to the end line and he stood up with his left foot. You know, he's predominantly right footed, so you know, but he's very, very much a two foot player. So that's a, it's a great advantage uh, that you can score off either foot. So it wasn't something that we were largely fixated on personally, you know, just trying to protect him because he's coming in for a lot of criticism. And uh, it's never nice when anyone is, you know, coming in for the, that level of criticism. 
Um, How do you do that though? Do you talk to them? Do you tell them that? Do you tell them to, he was talking about the celebration with the fingers in the ears, so are you telling them to block stuff out? Or how, how did you deal with that aspect? Of it? I don't know, I think, I think, um, I wouldn't like to give any great credit for that. I think the players, you know, terrific for them, and the players are terrific, and I think uh, we just wanted to really focus on the football and, and you know, a big challenge going away from home for the you know, World Cup qualifier again. And, and obviously we needed to win the game, you know, it was a win that we needed at that stage and um, to win 3-0 was important, you know, and that was, that was, uh, so we were pleased to win that. And, you know, I think he's now made himself, you know, through his form and we've seen some very good moments against Belgium, for example. And obviously he had him taken off the line and he sort of back it. But another brilliant moment when he threw a dummy to two players and struck, you know, a brilliant effort. Um, so he, he's shown important moments about creating and both his crossing, the level of his crossing and his finishing. His crossing is very high standard. When he gets into an area of either foot, he puts in he puts in quality. And um, but that's uh, he's, sh he's shown a, a versatility like he played Adam Eda led the line in that as a Bajan match and he played off the left starting off in that match when he got his two goals and yet when a few days later against Qatar he played as a centre forward so he's shown an ability to be to play across the front three which has been which has been for me that's that's it's great to have that. Gavin please uh, there's there's daily demonstrations on the streets of Yerevan over the current peace negotiations. There's calls from the government opposition for civil disobedience and there's been some heavy heavy police presence. Has the FBI kinda of had to talk to you about security issues, protection issues or have kind of tuned in on this a little bit? Uh, not really, no, we've, we've not been briefed on that at the moment, but I know that there's a delegation gone over um, that in, in the early hours, like they're going ahead of, you know, there's a security delegation gone over in advance, so they will, they will brief us, I'm sure, you know, you know, between now and then, they're, they're going on the ground, um, many of the three or four have gone over, isn't it, yeah. uh, you know, in advance, so, <clears throat> headed by John McGlue, the head of security, so, um, so certainly, they, uh, they, I'm sure they will, they will brief us in due course. The, how much of the Ukraine, the, the work of qualifier in Ukraine and Scotland, how much of an interest is that? Or is, is it almost an opportunity for Ireland? Because obviously the overwhelming focus of Ukraine and Scotland is on that match. Yeah, no, it, it, obviously we, won't get, we may get to see it actually, but the time, if the time has go, go, go to plan, we may get to see it in you know, in Armenia, which would be terrific. It's a, it's a game I'd love to be at. It's a fascinating game um, uh, between two teams, so uh, I'd, I'd actually love to be at it. Um, so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting that they, they become direct opponents in the World Cup um, playoff and in the Nations League. So it is, it is unusual. Um, I think we've just got to focus on our own matches nothing we can really do about any aspect of it if uh, if Ukraine win for example we um, they play Sunday and then they play play ourselves on the Wednesday if Scotland win Ukraine will full week to prepare for this and we're in Yerevan so it, it is but that's that you know I think it, it, it that's the material and in the big scheme it is, it's amazing that Ukraine are playing at all and I think that's uh, it's great, great, to, great that they are representing their country at this tough time. And um, the, I'm sure they'll be determined to get to the World Cup as in Scotland. And uh, so it's a, it's a fascinating game. Owen, please. Uh, thanks, Stephen. Uh, last year you said it was about building, and this year you've made it clear you want to win this competition. Now that you set targets, you will be judged on, and the team will be judged on what you do. Does it feel different for you? No, I mean, listen, I've always set targets, you know, probably, and um, set the bar high in, in, in dressing rooms I've been in, and I think that's, I've always did that, you know, and um, it's no guarantees, you know, if we don't win the group, you know, it won't be from the want of, 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 of trying, you know, as I said, we're not, we're not favourites, again, it's not making it. You know, I think we're probably toward favourites. It's easy to just play it down and just. But I think we want to we want to improve. You know, we're on a good run of form, and we obviously have improved a lot in that we 
We've only one defeat in twelve now, and it's an emerging team, and the team you feel the team is going to going to get better. Yeah, but they're tough games, and um, with the capacity to score goals, and we're defending better. And now you know we've got we're on a run of that. Um, you know, a good defensive performances as well. So um, yeah, no, we're, I feel that the team's getting better. And the players are players are. You know, it's a good, it's a good connection between the experienced players and the younger players, and um, you can really feel that in the group. Dan, um, Steve, I think you mentioned last week, Shane Duffy might come in. Did he play against the twenty-one? Yeah, like to be fair, two, two players didn't have to come in uh, initially. They would have been on to come in to, to the, yesterday. Shane Duffy and Conor Hurl and both come in early. Uh, Shane changed his plans. He was only off for a week. He came in early. To, I, yeah, I thought I thought it'd be advantageous for him to do that, to to train Saturday and play, get sixty minutes on the belt yesterday against uh, Meepo, Odebeko and, and Evan Ferguson. So it was good as his club mate. So it was good, good, good workout. You know, for, for him he played six. He played everyone played thirty minutes. For our two players, he played. He played sixty. So uh, it was good for him to get that in. Yeah, where is he at, do you think, sort of, in his fitness compared to, I don't know, there's times he's been last year and he hadn't played, is it different this year because he's more around? Well, I think he played a lot in the first half of the season for Brighton and obviously it's an ideal situation, so now you can't be sure, you know, but one of the good things is that he's been training every day at Brighton up to, the, up to last week where some of the players have finished four weeks ago, which will be nearly six weeks for, you know, but it's only play Armenia players in League One. So that that that's that's not ideal, you know. Um and some of the players in the, so it has been a challenge for players to keep themselves absolutely right. And um for Shane, he's trained really well and <coughs> <coughs> this is me. Listen, I gave him the option today after having two days training of because tomorrow we're amping it up again. Tomorrow the Real high intensity day, and uh, eleven the eleventh, and uh, I gave him the options today, having a real light day himself. But he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't hear tell of it. You know, he just didn't want, doesn't want that, he doesn't want to be looked at, looked after. He wants to train and get himself right. He's sort of, you know, he's not one to to to. Uh... Like I thought, I thought for example, he tapered his training two days in, giving a very light day today and up tomorrow, but he didn't want, he didn't want it. He didn't want it. it was it wasn't a real high intensity day today, but when we played eight sides, say with with our shape, you know three two, you know the three two three is against three teams of eight. He uh, he was firing himself in front of blocks and all over the place on his ring. So much for a down day for him, you know. He was absolutely firing himself, blocking challenges, and so um, he doesn't doesn't want it. He just he just wants to determine to. To earn his place. Paul, please. Stephen, um, under um, Mark O'Neill, it was no wins in four in this tournament, in this competition, sorry. Under yourself, there's one in six. And the World Cup began with two defeats. How important is it just to go and win on this first match in this new, in this competition, just to get off to a good start? Because that's probably hindered you and Mark in, in, in those three competitions I've mentioned, back to getting off good starts. Yeah, well, I think. Um, I didn't realise until Jared Dunn, I don't really follow this in, Jared Dunn, the analyst made the point, if we win on, he made the point to me yesterday, he said if we win on Saturday, Ireland haven't, haven't won three competitive games away since 2001, since before five or six of the players were born, I think, so it's a, it's a good period. That's why I'm not 100% sure that's accurate, but that's what he said. Um, so. Um, so it's a, an opportunity to do that because we've been scoring goals and obviously uh, since last March. So in terms of um, with good wins in Azerbaijan and Luxembourg, winning three 0 and three 0 away from home. So Armenia, it's um, we'll have to earn it because it'd be hot, and they'll be determined to go and do well. As you say, they they won their group previously to qualify for Group B. So we'll have to earn it. We won't be given anything. We'll have to earn, earn a victory out here. I know. I know they had a bad result in the in the friendly, which is a bit of a farcical game. 
but I, I'm not reading anything into that. That's like Southampton getting hammered and coming back because the, the man sent off early and they made four changes before half time. It was a bit of a surreal game, but they they've had some up and down results, admittedly, but they've qualified for Group B on on merit and they've had some good wins in the World Cup qualifiers. So we'll have to earn. It. You find me, Philip? No. Can I just one, one quick, just like going with Paul Fairy? It's interesting. He he's back in now. Given the the level he was playing at this season, he's probably the most successful Irish player in the last four or five months. Do you see him as an immediate impact now? Something like, is it completely in your plan that he's someone that you will, someone who you will look at maybe as the year goes on. As the year goes on, no, no, he's Michael is in the squad to make an impact. You know, Michael's in the squad to make an impact. I think he has been in good form. Obviously, had a few weeks off now. We'd rather, you know, we'd rather take him out of his last game and put him straight in. But he, he, uh, he's come in, you know, enjoying it, smiling his face, coming in, enjoying it. He's, you know, he's looking, look, enjoying the training, and uh, you know, it's been great that he's been injury free for a good period, and that's been a big plus for, him. you know, that's that's obviously injuries have hindered hindered his career. But since he's gone to Swansea. Second half of the season, he's had a right run of games, and that's it's really it's great to see. Great to see. Final question for the uh, Just um, before game, Stephen, in 10 11 days, James Coleman at 33, and you said he had a slight issue with the last match forever, and you missed. Yeah. You know, he, he's doing the solid there today. Um, how do you want to manage him? Because in the past, you've had to use him sparingly occasionally with back to back matches, but with four games, it's asking a lot for someone who has that match from injury. So, what's your plan with James? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is a tough challenge. So we have to. We have to assess it. I think we'll have to assess it after the first game. Sometimes the four game, four day. Although we have a travel, the four, the three day turnarounds are more difficult than the four day. Believe it or not, you know, the extra extra day sometimes is significant in the recovery process. Um, so from Saturday to Wednesday, as opposed to Wednesday to Saturday. Um, so these are things that we'll have to we'll have to manage and and, and the position he plays determines um you know your distance covered and your your repeated sprints you know are measured. For example, that right wing back would be considerably more than if he was playing right wing back three. But these are all things that we'll have to analyse and 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 discuss but, you know, so we'll 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 see how uh, Saturday goes first. Let's see how you. Okay.